Hi everyone, LazyFire here. Welcome to the Hate the Player podcast. We're on episode like 36 or something like that now, right? Guys? Something like that yeah, thing? I don't know. I don't know. I, it's not like I can just check this because I have YouTube open or anything. I'm just really lazy. Uh, which is actually why we haven't recorded in a couple weeks. But uh, as usual, I have Three Toes and Arnold here with me. Wow. Yay! Last week, I literally fell asleep on the couch uh, for like two hours after I got home. And uh, it was a busy day. It was VJ Day. Victory over Japan Day. My mm. parents live in a town that is one of the last places that actually celebrates that. And so we got to uh, have a huge parade go by the house, and I may have drank like a six pack plus several additional beers that I happened to grab over the course of like two how many how many racial epithets for Japanese people did you hear? Uh, not many, but there was a moment where my wife and I started counting down the number of minorities we saw in the parade. <laughs> well, we got to eighteen. It was an hour and a half long parade. An hour and a half long parade. Yeah, oh, it, it's it truly crazy. harkens Holy back shit. to the good old days. It's like you know, every fire department within like a, a forty mile radius shows up, and like the young Marines and the Cub Scouts, and you know, every politician in the world, uh, in the area, anyways, comes out. So the people running for governor were there, and this woman who's running for judge of probate in the town showed up. And uh, her husband had been revealed to have uh, white supremacist ties, like, <laughs> earlier in that week. And when they went to talk to him and, like, oh, this is clearly another guy with your name, right? And he goes, no, white people are getting the shaft in this country, and I have to stand up for him. Well. <laughs> yeah. Should have probably, should have probably checked on your husband's history of craziness, right? <laughs> Yeah. That's a thing. Yeah. So that that was fun. That was like when she's going by, it's like, oh no, everyone, watch out. <laughs> she's here for the white man. Mm. Like, oh, that was not good. Mm. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, have you guys actually played anything in the weeks since we've talked, Arnold? Uh, I haven't seen you or talked to you in a while, but I did play Warframe with you. Yeah, yeah. Actually, Warframe's kind of been my uh my thing i haven't really played battlefield or anything else it's uh gotta say it's it's pretty fucking good and they did the uh it's a free-to-play game which is normally like okay i'll pass on that which is why i hadn't played it yet Mm -hmm. um because you you get what you pay for yeah yeah but um it's it's a little grindy It, it it's a little bit little grindy but there's a lot of variety in the mission uh well i mean they all boil down to shoot man or keep man from shooting thing or capture man but I mean that's your usual video game type shit yeah. um, it, but it's, it's really fucking enjoyable and um, the, it, it's basically built to uh, leech money from dumb puppies because you can get basically <laughs> everything in the game without paying you just have to be patient the only thing you can't get uh, without paying for it is what are called uh, war fl- warframe slots or uh, uh, extra weapon slots. Um, so, but I mean, there are like 150 weapons. You just have to sell one and trade it out to build another or whatever. Yeah. What about it's, the the revives and stuff? If you want to do self revives, uh, yeah, yeah, you can't get more of those unless you uh, pay for them. You but you get four a day. Yeah, that and, was kind of what I was thinking. Yeah, you get it free. It, it resets daily. You get four, and you can actually save them up and as long as you log in every day and you get login bonuses um i think i think the going uh, the in-game currency um is called platinum yeah there's two there's the credits and the platinum yeah well right right but the credits are aren't you don't have to pay for those you can get those really easily uh the platinum is uh the like the monetization of it yep and it, it it's some, it's reasonable. Something like you get a hundred platinum or seventy something platinum for five bucks. Yeah, it's and, not too bad. Yeah, and uh, for comparison, to get a warframe, which is what you are, it's a different suit with different powers, all that. It's uh, what somewhere around three hundred platinum. I mean, it'd be about fifteen bucks. But the thing is, 
you it, you kind of eliminates the point of playing the game if you actually pay to get that shit. Yeah, yeah. Because it, they're all pretty easily uh, farmable. Yeah, but it runs off... It, I'm glad that it's one of those things that doesn't run off of, like, the energy concept or anything like that where you yeah. can't play... Oh. You can only play, like, so many missions a day or something. No, you, you need 5,000 fun crystals to play again. Oh, God, yeah. Or it's... <laughs> craft this thing and then you can use it to go to this place that's totally different yeah that that crap drives yeah. me insane you know one of the, um, the few mobile or one of the few uh, games that are like that that I actually thought was pretty good was that Trials game that came out yeah where it's uh, you basically every time you level up you get more energy and you use like the same amount of energy throughout the entire game so you start off with like five energy so you can do you know like five missions and then or they call it fuel and then once you level up, it fills up everything, and it gives you an additional fuel. So by oh. the time you're, like, anywhere near decent level, you'll be able to do a bunch of missions to the point where you're going to level up without having to worry about uh, the fuel cost. So it's actually really well done, and doesn't punish you for wanting to play the fucking game without paying money. Yeah. Uh, like I was saying, the only thing you have to pay for in this game is uh, extra basically armor slots which is each each suit is an armor slot but i mean it, it's more of a convenience thing that's the only thing that you can't farm in the game everything else is totally obtainable there aren't there aren't it isn't pay to win you can get like i just got the best gun in the game just by playing the game so and it, it, there's a ton of variety and every gun is actually pretty different it's a it's a really enjoyable uh, third person uh, third person shooter. It's like it, it, I, if I had to describe it, I would say, basically say it's a Mass Effect three with bigger maps and just as fun, if not more, probably more fun actually. Yeah, the the shit you can do like uh, when everyone was talking to me when we got, you know you and I played for a bit and uh, you know the way we were playing, I, I didn't realize that when you slid, you could jump at the end, or swing your weapon at the end of that, yeah. and just, like, propel yourself around, and I, once everyone kind of told me about that, I started doing that all the time. Oh, yeah. And yeah, I ended I, up in, like, spots I shouldn't be in, or yep. I used to get to a spot towards the end of one of the uh, Earth stages, it's, it's, where it's, yeah, like... Space, Nin Space Ninja Parkour. Yeah, it was pretty fun. And you know what the uh, the game these guys be, uh, made before that was Dark Sector. I don't know mm -hmm. if you remember that. Yeah, but yeah, that it's a... that was uh, supposed to be an early 360 game that was taking place in space where you were like a space ninja with a sword and everything. Yeah, this and is they... the game they originally wanted to make. Yeah, so I don't know. It's uh, Warframe is interesting. I put a few hours into that on uh, solo, and you can totally do some of the low level missions solo uh, without much issue. So. Yeah, uh, it, there's a lot of grind, though, for unlocks and weaponry and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. It's definitely an MMO. definitely is. And if that's not your thing, then and MMOs usually aren't my thing. But um, it's it's fun. It scratches my uh, spur itch, needing, needing to get the prettiest, uh, the prettiest uh, shit and all that, you know? Oh, man. That that was kind of what bug, uh, was bugging me, playing with uh, Zebra and the other guys was yeah. like, okay, well, that's not really a good weapon. Can I have fun with it? Yes, you can. Okay, well, you know, I don't care if my Warframe sucks. That, uh, initially yeah, that's here. that's the thing. Um, they're all they're all really nice guys, and uh, but uh, some of them are more fun focused than others. Yeah, and you can have fun with with most of the guns. I mean, they're yeah. they're and they're all they're all pretty fucking different. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, there's something like. Nine different types of melee uh, melee uh, weapons. There's shit, shotguns, pistols, uh, bows, crossbows, uh, dual pistols, uh, shit, whips. Uh, there's a ton of different shit. Yeah, yeah. It seemed kind of crazy going through some of the stuff. I mean, when like, I uh, yeah, you can do these things. It's like, holy shit! Yeah, like, when I say that there's 150 weapons, I mean there's 150 different weapons. There are a couple. There are a couple that are the same, um, but really that's the exception and not the rule. Yeah, I like that there were bows in it, and you guys were like, no, if you put these things on there, the bow becomes this insane like monster. Oh yeah, and the the physics in the game, the physics in the game are just 
fucking amazing. The bow basically becomes a rail gun, and <laughs> you can uh, shoot through a uh, line of ten people and kill them all. Why? Because reasons. That's how bows work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was... I had a lot of fun playing it with a lot of people. That was... I, I think that's the big thing, playing with a full party and oh, yeah. being able to it, just it's... dominate some of the stuff. Because if you play it by yourself, you're playing... You're kind of limiting yourself, like those uh, the defense and survival missions. Oh yeah, no, no, it's, uh, the defense mi- touch, can't defense missions where you're uh, keeping them from shooting a thing. Yeah, um, is uh, you have to have more people, even if you're high level. There's just too many. There are too many enemies to dispose of easily. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, but yeah, that's that's Warframe. I think it's really interesting. I'll probably keep playing it and. Uh, seeing what else I can get out of it. it it's a fun game. It, it, it really is, and I usually am not a huge fan of, like, here's this free-to-play Steam game, and it's... Oh, yeah. It, Jesus Christ, no. got all this grinding to it, which it does have a lot of fucking grinding, because some of this shit is like, you know, you can't just go to a mission. You, so, to explain it, for every uh, every weapon you want to craft, you have to get a blueprint, and then you have to get the components. Some of and them are purchasable in the market, but yeah, with platinum, not with credits. True. And they're well, expensive. no, 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 no. You can get uh, mar- uh, blueprints for weapons with uh, with. Credits. Oh no, no, sorry. I meant yeah, with credits you can get blueprints, but the components for it you need to buy them with platinum. Right. Otherwise, you need to farm them, and each planet uh, it has uh, different things that it drops, and yeah. Yep. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, and so. You know, going through that stuff and, like, getting all this stuff requires you to go to a planet that drops the components. And sometimes mm-hmm. you'll get lucky and it's like, okay, you're on Earth, they drop Neurodes and Rubidio, or whatever the yeah, fuck it is. Right. But you can't tell which missions are going to drop what. It's completely random as to what drops. And so I spent, I don't know, like six or seven hours trying to get just two Neurodes. Oh, for, yeah, that's like, one of uh, the rarest drops in the game, and they only drop from, like, like the big guys. Yeah. It's kind of a bitch. Yeah, it was just a whole mess. Uh, I... <clears throat> but I'm trying to think of the, the way I want to describe it. But it's like, if you're going to give me a planet, give me, like, specific missions that will give me a guaranteed drop. Make yeah. it random. You know, like the assassination missions, where it's like, okay, every time you kill this guy, he could drop one of these four things. Great. Good. Right. You know, c- narrow it down for me. Yeah, and the random random number generator hated me, and I actually had to run a boss 20 times. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, I can definitely get really grindy. But it's... The, it's a it's a good game. I mean, it, it really is a good game. I think it's still in beta, actually. Is it? Huh. Yeah, but uh, it doesn't feel like a beta. It's not like Daisy, where everything's fucking broken, and it's a solid, enjoyable game. Yeah, yeah. It was. <laughs> Speaking of Daisy, oh, uh, <laughs> while we were on, let's call it sabbatical. A, a week-long hiatus? Uh, yeah, <laughs> that week-long hiatus when I was too tired to do anything because I fell asleep. I wasn't drunk. That was the weird part. I was I just tired was. from drinking. Uh, but I was I was so tired, my day was so full of drinking so hard that I got tired. Uh, yeah. Impressive. Anyways, the, the fact, you know, Three Toes and I actually jumped in for a couple hours in a game called Unturned. Which is like everything I'm conditioned to hate in video games. Mm-hmm. So oh, it's you like a, it. It's a open world zombie survival early access game with uh, crafting elements. It's like let's just go down the list of things I don't like in video games right now, right? <laughs> I didn't have to pay for it though. <laughs> right. The the difference it's, is though, it's like not it's not monetized or anything, right? It was made by well, you can, a you sixteen can, year old or something. Yeah, you can. Um, you can purchase a quote-unquote gold account, which is basically like just donating to help with the development of the game. 
And then it just makes your name gold in chat. You can join gold servers, but nobody has a gold server up. Um, I think oh. you also get like a gold suit that you can wear as like clothing. But I think I think what sets it apart from all that stuff you hate is that the game itself is very tongue in cheek, in my opinion. Like it really does not take itself seriously at all because you're basically block people. And you, I mean, you could when you're making your character, you can make yourself bright pink. You look like you know one of the blockheads from Gumby. And yeah, you know it's very car- it's very cartoony. The Gumby is actually the best way to describe how those motherfuckers look. <laughs> yeah, you God. look like Gumby people, but it it has all the Daisy elements. Like you know, you're just dropped into a world naked with nothing, and you you know you have a hunger bar, you have a thirst bar, you have a disease bar, you have a health bar. And they're zombies, and there are other players if you join the multiplayer server, and you have to find a way to survive. Um, you know, you have to find water, you have to find clean water. If you drink, you know, dirty water, it increases your disease level, which can eventually kill you. Ooh. Um, so, same hey, it's thing already like, ahead of Daisy with that. It, <sighs> the, the thing is, like, is. You know, as you mentioned, it's, it's developed by a 16 year old kid, and it works so much better than DayZ. Like, it's not even funny. It's pretty, with the exception of, like, hackers and, ex, and you know, exploits and, and multiplayer. Oh, yeah, DayZ doesn't have a problem with that. Wait. Well, I mean, <laughs> single, single player functions perfectly. Um, and it's, it's, it's just really fun. Yeah, there's all kinds of crafting elements, like, you know, if if you want to make a campfire to cook raw meat, you know, if you hunt down some deer or pigs, you know, you need to get so many stone and so many sticks and craft them into a campfire. You can you can craft, uh, you know, if if you're not lucky enough to find a silencer for your gun in the military base or anything, you can craft one out of two coke cans and two empty like food cans. That's awesome. At a camp at a campfire and yeah. make like a makeshift silencer for your gun. It's 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 really, really fun. Um like I say, you know, multiplayer can get kind of frustrating with people, you know, glitching and just spawning in items that they want. But is hacking a big deal in the game? Um it's not terrible. I'd say every every third or fourth server you run into will have kind of hackers. Um gotcha. The bigger problem is if they have the servers set to sync. Sync meaning it will sync up with what you oh, have in servers. your single player world. Uh, oh, no, no, what really? Well, that that as well, yeah. but yeah, with your single player as well. So if you go in single player, which is not hard, to just go around and find all the best shit, find a sync server, and just start wrecking house with people. But you kind of expect that. Because most most servers on you know server listings online will tell you if it's a sync server or not. Right. So you you pretty much don't even want to touch one of those unless you're unless you're geared up. But no, I mean you you can't you can't say you didn't have fun playing that game. Uh, yeah, I, I can't. I can't say well, I didn't. Uh. It, I didn't really have any of the issues with like bugs or anything like that. You know, the simplistic graphics and everything, and I understand, made by a 16-year-old. Blah, blah, blah. Here uh, comes the butt. No, but... Uh, yep. Some of the stuff, the crafting window and all that other... Like, the menu interface is some of the most unintuitive right. stuff I have ever experienced. No, yeah, I agree. I, I, didn't, I didn't know it could be that bad, but it's like, to craft... You go into your inventory, and then you click on the crafting tab, and then you move something over by right-clicking it instead of left-clicking right, and dragging. Right, you don't dragging. click and drag or anything, yeah. Yeah, it's like, the, it's not really explained anywhere, so you just like have to like start clicking on random shit with everything you have and hope oh, it works. Baby needs an instruction manual. And uh, the fact that like if you want to find, if you want to get a weapon in the world, you have to go find it kind of bugs me. So you're completely at the mercy of the RNG. And if you're very lucky, you'll get something like an axe, which is going to be your best weapon in the game, because not only do weapons not degrade, 
Uh, weapons like the axe can be used to take down trees, get crafting materials, and so on. So right. it's like, if you find a machete, it's like, oh good, if there was some sugar cane here, this would, like, I could start a rum distillery, this would be great. Uh, but I don't Wait, have really? that ability. No, no, you can't, Arnold. I was mixing that up. Uh, <laughs> but, like, some of the other stuff, like, uh, gassing up cars and things like that is kind of weird, but I gotta say, it was a lot of fun to just, you know, when we're tooling around in the, uh, in that sports car and trying yeah. to run down deer and pig and watching how those, <laughs> watching the car bounce off of them, uh, we're going. Yeah, that that was weird. I had, I had never had that happen before. We we plowed into a deer at full speed and just bounce right off of it. Well, I like I honestly, I really like games with janky physics. Yeah, like, I would but... I wouldn't necessarily call it janky. It's just really simplistic. Um, it's definitely games where some some parts of it you're gonna overthink things mm. to where like you just it's really really simple. There's other parts where it's actually gets kind of complicated. Like you'll be you'll be walking around oh you and I'm sure that's it's like this in DayZ. You'll find a magazine for a specific gun, but it won't have any bullets in it. Yep. Good and time. immediately and immediately I'll just think oh well that's fucking garbage. I'm not gonna pick that up. No, you need to combine the magazine in your crafting menu with the correct bullets, and it'll become a full magazine. Oh. Like, there's, like, civilian bullets, there's military bullets, there's shotgun shells. Actually, to make to make more shotgun shells, you pick up a box of empty shells, oh, and God. then you either combine them with nails to make buckshot, or you combine them with bolts to make slugs. Yeah. Yeah, you mentioned that to me. I thought that was amazing. So it's, it's really got some pretty pretty neat aspects. It's it's simple yet complex, like a fine wine. Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's it's got some. But consi- considering it's free and made by a sixteen year old. No, and Canadian sixteen year old. So you know he doesn't even have a good computer. Oh yeah, yeah. You're you're running around <laughs> on on a uh, Prince Edward Island apparently. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's that's it's called PEI. I didn't know yeah. why it was called that. And then when we found like the Canadian military flag and there were mounties, I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> I get it now." But Pretty Yeah, it's it's a really fun little thing. Like, you know, you can waste a couple hours in there uh just like with a couple people. I th- I think you would have had more fun if we could have found a a reliable server with yeah. people on it. We were instead of just a, you and me. Yeah. So three toes and I were in a server that we jumped in. We we're playing for a little while. We got like twenty, what twenty minutes in or something like that, and then the server just completely died. It like reset yeah. or something like that. And it was like, okay, well, we'll go back and see what we can do. But then we figured out self-hosting and uh, jumped in. So, I don't know if you checked the release notes, but there was an update to it, and the kid is adding... I like calling him the kid now. He's adding uh, stupid stuff like Steam servers, so they'll be reliable now, and stuff like that. And trying to make it actually, like, worth releasing and picking up and all that other stuff. Yeah. So, you know, good for him. I think that's a great thing to do. Uh, Let's see how long it stays free to play. Uh, or what kind of benefits you get from having downloaded it free to free to play? But I would really suggest people go take a look at it. The price is right for what it is. <laughs> uh, it's a fun little thing. It's completely free to play. Man, There's look, at, no... look at us! Look at us! We're going to start talking about Facebook games soon. Shit! Clash of Clans is like game of the year 2014, Jeez, game, of the year 2013, game of the year 2013, game of the year 2012. Speaking of that, I've been watching. A very tongue-in-cheek let's play of the Kim Kardashian iOS game. Oh man, yeah. it's wait, fucking, wait, wait, it's wait, fucking wait, hilarious. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. So there's this, there's a a Kim Kardashian iOS game, and it's all about you're you're playing a character who like works in like a clothing store, and Kim Kardashian comes in one day and you help her out. It's the whole game is like you trying to become an A-list celebrity through like photo shoots and. It's it's just fucking ridiculous. But yeah. it's, it's so funny to see a Let's Play of it, knowing how ridiculous and stupid the game is. 
yeah. and just someone just having fun with just just completely ridiculous game. And there there are ti- apparently there's timers in the game to be like, oh well, you have you have one hour to complete this photo shoot. Yeah, you know, try and you know up your your celebrity status or whatnot. Blah blah blah. And you're like, why would I need that? Why would I need that much time to do it? No, it's like a real life clock. Yeah. To where if you have to leave the game and go do something, you're going to miss out on that opportunity. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm trying to think. There was a game that was like that for the DS. Oh, like Animal Crossing, basically. Yeah. yeah. Where it's like synced to your clock locally. Uh, yeah. You know what the funny thing was on that is because of the way that clock works and how it's like a live clock. When the game fucking shut down, the servers for the game shut down. Uh, for unscheduled maintenance, <laughs> people were fucking yes. hounding Kim oh Kardashian on Twitter. There and was such like Twitter drama over that. It was so hilarious. Somebody Wait. put together, somebody put together like a, I don't know, like a seven hundred fucking image, like list of <laughs> like Twitter complaints on Kim Kardashian's Twitter. Like, like fix she your has game, anything Kim. to do with that game? Yeah. It was basically looking at Dice's Twitter, like right after Battlefield Four release, where it's like, uh, "Fix your game, Dice." While you apostrophe re game, yeah. people were like, "People, were like, I family. have a photo shoot I need to get to. Are you fucking kidding me?" I went on four dates with Chad, and this is going to be the big one. And you guys are fucking. <laughs> God, over. Oh no! You're ruining my life, Kim. Like, no joke. Unironic and ironic going on in there, but like, probably a lot not ironically. Uh. People take their fucking free Facebook games that made Kim Kardashian two hundred million dollars. Fucking <laughs> serious as shit. Sure. You know what? Let's let's make Lazy Fire's goddamn uh, phone game where you like show up at my house one day and you're like I want to help you with something and I'm like uh, uh, go away please and let's see how much money I can get from like then this person having to put their life together because I don't want to spend time with them. <laughs> I don't know. That's just an idea. I'm just I'm throwing out ideas for you here. Uh, uh, but yeah, like games like that and all these other free to play games that people take seriously, it, it always mystifies me. Yeah, every time I see the commercial for either Clash of Clans or that, Wait, there's a commercial for that piece. There of is shit? a oh, motherfucking yeah. there's a com- ton of commercials commercial. for it. And the um, the Hobbit version of basically Clash Clash of Clans, like Kingdoms of Middle Earth. I don't know if you've seen that one. Yeah. But it's like a knockoff Legolas and a knockoff Gimli sitting on a park bench arguing about, you know, oh, my archers are going to take down your axe, man. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that, and that's just an insane ad, and I'm like, oh. Well, I'm obviously like, some it's thing because together. archers would kill axe men, duh. Well, it's, <laughs> they spent more money on the commercials than they did on the actual game development. <laughs> well, yeah, 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 probably. What was it? The uh, Dungeon Keeper when EA re-released Dungeon Keeper on iOS and Android and stuff like that. It was absolutely like trash, broken, and EA had to come out with like, "Oh no, this isn't the company direction we're taking. Where we just release broken games all the time. That's not it at all." That was pretty great. Like. These, and, and oh, uh, what about the Simpsons game that they released as well? Womp womp. Like, there's just a series of, like, really shitty games that are trying to cash in on the mobile market. You know what was weird is, uh, there was a guy who was in the Xbox One Sucks thread who kept posting, yeah, that's the thread that I go to and read all the time. Uh, he was posting about how, like, realistically, the biggest market right now is mobile and, uh, tablet gamers because not because like oh hey this is it's the hottest selling devices PCs and consoles easily outsell tablets and smartphones uh, new ones anyways on a per year basis like the install base for a console is much higher than any smartphone but the weird thing is that like people spend a ridiculous could you imagine like oh hey you know, Plants vs. Zombies 2 wants me to spend $50 for keys, and that's the best deal. I'm going to get 1,000 keys. Could you imagine spending $50 on Plants vs. Zombies? Nope. Okay. Well, congratulations. You are not a moron or six. Because uh, wow. apparently, apparently that's a thing. 
I have my moments. Yeah, hey. I'm, I'm glad that you can see the value in not spending that money. How much money do you spend on uh, Platinum within Warframe so far, Arnold? Uh, five bucks, and that's only because I got a bunch of shit all at once. And Oh, oh well, another thing with Warframe. There's actually a random chance after you log on for, I think, something like seven days in a row. You can get a discount on Platinum for anywhere 20 to 75%. Huh. So, I mean, as far as free-to-play, it, it's not bad. But we aren't going back down that road again. We already talked about that. <sighs> back down every road. Uh, yeah, so um, you guys play anything besides those two free-to-play? What I'm sure uh, be I play. Well, well, no, we actually had a podcast about uh, Counter-Strike Go, and I can't really say how disappointed I am in that game. Mm-hmm. Considering how much is. how much I loved Counter Strike, but granted, I I don't know. I no, I played that I played that game something like five years, and at the end, I just got fucking bored with it and started cheating, and then that really that really uh, brought the game back for me. Oh, oh man, that's a good time. Something about there's nothing that that just makes me as fundamentally happy as a puppy's misery. And I really think that says a lot about what kind of person I am. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't, yeah, hmm. I think I'm a bad person. <laughs> this podcast has made me realize I'm a terrible person. <laughs> wow, it took the podcast. Yep. You can you can you can title this one Arnold's moment of clarity. <laughs> it only took twelve years of drinking, but I found it. <laughs> uh, yeah, the. Being a terrible person is like it, it's part and parcel, I think, for a lot of us because it's in video games especially. Cause it's just it doesn't matter, you know. The there's that Tyler the Creator tweet that gets posted a lot about oh, cyberbullying. Yeah, <laughs> just uh, how are you gonna get cyberbully? Just turn off the computer, just walk away. <laughs> Problem gone. Uh, and I think that's the the uh, avenue a lot of us look at the game through or. Look at like game trolling through or something like that. Yeah. See, I'm I'm it's only a, a terrible person online. It's yeah, a yeah, no, it's crime. Really, it really yeah. is. Although I, I have to say, you got that. I was uh, when you were giving me the live commentary of you cutting down the guy who was trying to rob you in uh, Unturned was pretty great. It's like, oh, he's trying to rob me, so I pulled out my katana. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, well yeah, okay, so I I was walking up on this town and two guys show up with like guns and uh all I had was like a katana. <laughs> and so I didn't feel like typing out or anything to him. It also has like proximity based voice yeah, yeah. chat. Like if you're near someone you can hear them talking. Good. Um so I just started like laying food down on the ground to try and appease them. And they kept like demanding more stuff. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, started just swinging on them. <laughs> it immediately got shot in the face. Yeah. Well. Oh well. So much for that, right? And then you had the other one that was like a nice trade, where the guys like. Yeah, like, I uh, I shit. laid. Yeah, I laid down some food, and the guy like gave me a canteen, which is like a lifesaver in that game. Like yeah. a refillable source of water. Yep. It's great. I hmm. like it. Uh, anyways, the uh, the thing I was going to say about like trolling people and everything like that is we actually got weirdly counter-trolled the other night in Battlefield 4 where like we were we had been fucking around for most of the time. Like I was flying a little bird and letting fu- someone... I had uh, the vehicle resupply thing going on, so he was just firing javelins out the side of my little bird at tanks that couldn't do anything against us. And, like, occasionally a little bird would come after us, I'd knock it out of the sky, and we'd continue on our our merry way. Well, eventually they started loading up little birds with people with, like, iglas and chasing me down, and I couldn't do anything against them. And uh, then all, like, one entire squad of their team, five guys were constantly jihad jeeping our vehicles as they came out of spawn. And so it was like, oh, this is what it's like to be trolled. This is amazing. <laughs> like, we can't... <laughs> we're literally stuck in base. Our our heavy-hitting vehicles can't get anywhere. And they're using our tactics against us. So, like, 
if you think you're getting anywhere with a bike or anything like that, you're screwed. So it was actually kind of entertaining to have that happen to me instead of the other team for once. I was I was kind of laughing about that the entire time. But it's like, you know, if you can't take it with a sense of humor and just understand it's a game and kind of tolerate it, it's, it's one thing. Uh, there's some people who get very, very upset about that sort of uh, positioning as well, which is kind of weird. Like, it's a game. Don't worry about the balance or whatever it is. Just have fun playing it. It's, no, it has to be balanced in the right way for me to play it, which essentially means it has to be balanced towards the things I like or it's badly balanced. Yep. It's like, if air vehicles are not untouchable, then I don't want to play this game. Pretty or, much. We yeah. don't know anybody like that. No. Nah, I don't know. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was yeah, it was fun to play that again. I had actually missed a couple weeks of that, so it was fun to get back into Battlefield and everything. Because uh, I only get to play, like, on the weekends now for any video game. Huh, nerd. Yeah, my fucking life and shit. Uh, so you guys uh, touched on anything else? Did anything uh, grab your attention from GDC, Game Developer Conference? or No, sorry, Gamescom. This is what they just had in... Uh, Germany. I, yeah, up in uh, Cologne. Um, I, I honestly haven't looked into it yet. I I think it like just ended, so I'll probably start searching through. Yeah, it, it didn't sound like a lot of really cool stuff got announced. Uh, it sounds like there's a game called Rhyme that is a survival game where like by day you go and search for stuff, and by night monsters come out and you have to defend yourself against them. So. People are obviously going crazy over it because it has Wind Waker style cell shaded graphics and it looks like Ico. Uh, so people are like, "Oh my God, this is going to be an amazing game!" When it's like probably like a solid 7.5 when it gets released. Uh, the big news in there are two big, uh, big announcements from Konami. One is that there is a game in development called Silent Hills. And it is being headed by uh, Kojima of Metal Gear fame and Guillermo del Toro of Pan's Labyrinth, uh, Pacific Rim, you know, Hellboy fame. So they're working together to make a Silent Hill game. Uh, Mm. So people are very interested in seeing how that turns out. Uh, Apparently the last, like, I stopped playing Silent Hill after Silent Hill 2. Apparently that was a good place to stop playing Silent Hill. Uh, because it, it apparently got off the wall nuts and stupid after that and bad. Yeah, I, I never uh, never really played any of them. It's I don't know how the current games really shake out. I've heard that they like they started to look more into combat and not only fixing it but making it a primary focus. But in Silent Hill Two, it's you know you carry a limited number of weapons and you swing pretty slowly and you take down a monster but it's all about atmosphere and uh, throwing some unpredictable stuff at you every now and again along with stupid puzzles like every Resident Evil game ever had Uh, so we'll see how that goes the other big announcement also involved Kojima Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes and the Phantom Pain the two Metal Gear 5 parts are going to be released on Steam Really? Yep. The one yes. thing that I thought, hey, I finally never have to hear about Metal Gear games ever again when I built my gaming PC, I was fucking wrong. So. <laughs> wah, wah. Yeah, yeah. Like, I know that people are like, hey, this is great news, you know, Japanese developers looking at PC gaming, but I think that's not really great news because those games are terrible. Yeah, I don't think there's a single game by a Japanese developer that I want to play. Do you want to play Rise, Summon of Rome? No. Well, in weekly Crytek news, uh, <laughs> a couple weeks ago, Crytek announced that they are going to be re-releasing Rise, Son of Rome. Their hit, well, not so much hit, but their Xbox One uh, launch title on the PC with HD graphics. Oh, HD. Ooh. Yeah got to put that in there because it wasn't HD there's... on the Xbox One. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because third-person combat games are so popular on the PC. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's where I play all my third-person combat games. 
We just uh, spent like 20 minutes talking about a third person combat game. Yeah, Warframe. Yeah. Well, I have no idea what it is, so that's why I was silent for 25 minutes. I was wondering why you weren't saying anything. Or even asking. Did uh, I? Eh, eh, eh. Just didn't sound Great interesting. Game too. Anyway. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes. But that means, and let's go with this one, that Dead Rising 3 is coming to the PC. You could already actually pre-order it for a discount during the summer sale. Rise Son of Rome coming to the PC. And uh, the big news for Xbox One out of uh, Gamescom was that they have an exclusivity deal with uh, Tomb Raider, Rise of the Tomb Raider, I should say, which is uh, the next Tomb Raider game coming in holiday 2015. And a lot of people took a look at the screen that they announced this with. It said exclusively on Xbox holiday 2015. Hmm. And we're like, does that mean it's exclusive starting then or it's exclusive for that period? Like, when it releases, is it exclusive in perpetuity or what's going to happen? And no one would give them a straight answer on that. Uh, and so the speculation immediately started that Microsoft paid for a short or even several month exclusivity deal for a Tomb Raider game, thinking that that would sell systems in a year and a half. Because mm. Microsoft business decisions are fucking beyond everyone. Uh, so, yeah, it looks like... And then Ben Kuchera, Human Shit Stain, and Moron Extraordinaire tried to make the case that Microsoft, uh, that Square was making a, a smart move by making it exclusive to the Xbox. Because obviously when you said that the first Tomb Raider reboot game did not do well because it sold 20 million copies, uh, which is something Square actually said and said the idea of a sequel might have to be put on hold when the game released. Because uh, <laughs> 20 million copies sucks now. Uh, but because of that, it was Ben Kuchera was trying to argue, like, no, you don't understand, guys. It's exclusive to Xbox platforms, which means it's got all of Xbox 360 and the 5 million or possibly even 10 million by 2015 Xbox Ones that are out there. You know, they can put the game on that, and they'll get more people because, obviously, every person who owns one of these consoles will buy the game. Like, some really fucking weird mental gymnastics to try to explain why this was a good move for anyone. <laughs> And people on Twitter and in the comments were fucking merciless against him, trying to explain his math being terrible. It's like, this is why you're a video game journalist, Ben. You're always going to be a video game journalist. You don't know how to math. It's, it was pretty good. Uh, but, yeah, it looks like that's going to be... Uh, and as more information has come out afterwards, it looks like it is going to be a short exclusivity deal that may last until the summer of 2016 but not much further. So, yeah. Consider that, I guess. But that means that if you release a game on the Xbox One with exclusivity, and it has Rise in the title, it is going to show up on the PC. Think about it. Rise, Son of Rome. Spelt with a Y, so maybe, I don't know. Uh. Dead Rising, and Rise of the Tomb Raider. Hmm. I would mm. say... Let's, you know, so next year uh, we're going to see Gears of War Rising. We're going to see, oh, you know what, Metal Gear Rising also appeared on the PC. So Gears of War Rising, that's going to be on the PC. Uh, Halo Master Chief Collection Rising, that'll be on the PC. They're going to re-release, no, sorry, they're going to re-release -re Halo 1 for the Xbox One in the Master Chief Collection. Wow. So this is the second re-release of... Halo 1 coming in the Xbox, uh, coming in the last five years. And, and that's part of it. Of course, they have Halo 2, Halo 3, and Halo 4 in there as well. But, like, why is 343 working on Halo HD remakes all the time? Like, didn't you guys have them doing something like making a game? Yeah, maybe uh, Halo uh, 5. Yeah, that's in process, but it's not due for another year, so they need to have their yearly Halo release. Yeah, it, Halo 4 wasn't bad. The multiplayer was garbage, but, I mean... I actually posit that Halo multiplayer isn't that terrible. It's just that what we 
have experienced in the last few years and the changes that have come through multiplayer games from the start of the first Halo being released till now has like completely changed how people perceive those games. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. But I, I just don't enjoy that that it's it's just outdated, just like Counter Strike to me. Like I loved Halo, I loved Counter Counter Strike and now I don't like either of them. Shotgun. Shotgun and Counter Strike. Get real close. <laughs> Anger everybody. Hmm. Uh, yeah, you know what? It was weird seeing people get excited because they're bringing Halo 2 style multiplayer. Like, Halo 2 multiplayer is apparently remaining intact for the Halo Master Chief collection. And it's like, man, when I when we bought Halo, you know, this is freshman year of college, you know, a bunch of people on the floor had Xboxes and we'd like land play Halo and we bought Halo 2 and it was like this is a betrayal of everything we hold sacred <laughs> where's, yeah, my, was, where's my pistol why, where's the pistol you get this shitty SMG you have to dual wield you have to get good with this battle rifle that's out there this is fucking bullshit you know that that sort of thing Like people were very upset about Halo 2 multiplayer uh, especially on our floor and like to me, Halo 2 multiplayer was like the one no one really liked. I don't understand why that's coming back. I really don't. Oh, no, that was the one that actually made it huge. Well, that was because uh, it had I mean, Xbox that's Live. Xbox Live and all that going... I mean, that's that's when Halo really, really, really blew up. I mean, at least, at least so far as I remember, I mean, it, it was one of the first games that uh, consoles really got online with. Well, I mean, there had been like things like SOCOM in that time frame, I, too. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. But, but nothing uh, nothing big like that. Halo you know. 2 was huge. Oh, it was huge. It was just, I don't I don't have fond memories of it myself. Like, Three Toes, did you play Halo 2 at all? No. I never okay. really played any of the Halo. I, I liked it. It, was, it wasn't a bad game. Uh, I, I liked Halo 3 best of, of all of them. Mm. Uh, I, 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 for me... Halo was always about the vehicles. Yeah. And because I think, I mean, outside of maybe Battlefield, and even then it's close, I think they got the balance of vehicles just perfect. Mm. And it, I really enjoyed the vehicle combat, and that all I ever played were the, the big game types uh, where I could just fly around in a little, little banshee and shoot mans. <laughs> oh, man, that was a good time. Yeah, it's... I don't know. The Halo 1 just seemed to have a really good... That was... If you want to look at Halo 1 Blood Gulch, that was like what people... <laughs> that was... Uh, imagine, if you ever got a hit with a rocket launcher on a full vehicle when they're carrying your flag, and then you now have two Warthogs, <laughs> and the Warthogs in that game were indestructible. <laughs> yes. Hey, motherfuckers, guess who wins? Uh, you know, that sort of stuff. It was like the the mad rush for the power weapons and all these other things that the Halo games had. You know, I think they had their place, and I think in 2007 they got absolutely fucking destroyed because of a little thing called Call of Duty popping in and saying, by the way, loadouts, perks, etc. And uh, kind of knocking things away. Uh, but speaking of Call of Duty... Uh, they did the Advanced Warfare trailer showing and all the crazy like future tech they have in that game is going to be part of the multiplayer. So it's basically Crisis 3 multiplayer. Hmm. Uh, that's probably not a good move for them because I think it's going to get abused and complained about a lot. Uh, but on the other hand, I also recently completed Medal of Honor the 2010 edition. And... Uh, we are going to be doing something with that, you guys and I. Yay! Uh, something a little different. No one listens to this fucking podcast, so I can kind of explain it here without too much getting spoiled before it actually shows up. But the current plan with that is to actually go in. I'm going to record all the videos. I'm going to actually do two playthroughs of the game. It won't take long because I beat the game on normal using only a pistol my first time ever playing the game <laughs> in four hours. 
Wow. I had never even touched this game before. I beat it in <laughs> four hours with just a pistol. Over the course of, like, I don't know. I started it I started it when I bought the game last year, and I said, you know what, I'm going to finish this now. And I sat down, and I played it for two hours, and I'm like, oh, I'm done? <laughs> okay. Uh, but it's... Uh, to make it more interesting, we're, I'm going to go through, record everything, cut it into video segments, and we're going to actually write full-on jokes, uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000 style, to put over our video of this thing. So it'll be hopefully a little bit more structured and entertaining, and we can do sort of uh, higher-minded concepts with it, you know, have conversations and... Uh, do movie quotes and stuff like that that would uh, probably be impossible if we were doing this all off the cuff but there will probably be a lot of off the cuff uh, concepts and speeches and so on uh, but the other half of this and I don't think I told you guys this is I'm going to go through on my own and do a subtitled playthrough of pistols only because it needs to be seen to be believed that you can fucking beat this game using nothing but a pistol because <laughs> pistols come with infinite ammo so, and uh, by the way, it has full-on dice ballistics in it. So pistols, when you fire them, do not always go exactly where you're aiming. You have to hope and pray that it, like the bullets travel exactly as you expect it to. That sounds awful. It's weird. It's very weird to get used to. I actually found that by the end of the game, crouching and then firing without aiming down sights was actually the best way to go, because you had a really small spread, and you could just kind of aim it at the person's head and hit them. But you get little headshot indicators whenever you headshot somebody in the single player. And I'm like, this is actually very helpful, because I know if I got the kill or not now, so that people will take like four or five pistol shots to the chest to die. But yeah, that's the... uh we may end up taking a few weeks off the podcast to record the episodes needed for that. Yeah, so stay tuned to okay. not watch that. Yeah, hey. <laughs> said, yeah. said everyone ever. Yeah. Oh boy, I can't wait to continue not watching this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to continue not participating in it. Yeah, you're having fun over there. Uh, but, yeah, we've been at this a little while now. I think it is uh, time to call it a night. How you guys feel? Yeah, go oh, fuck yourself. Fuck. Roll Tide? Roll Tide. Arnold? Born ready. Uh, th- that's... Alright, fine. Fuck you too, Arnold.